So I'm literally fresh off the flight. I wanted this information to be as accurate as possible. Your preparation for this trip is going to dictate a lot of how the outcome will be for you. It's like I knew what I was getting into, but I didn't really know what I was getting into. So number one, a lot of the things that I realized was important there was having your tax reseller license. Um, I already had one prior to the trip. Um, I just forgot the actual one. I'm actually, yeah, I'm very forgetful. But I actually had an email, thank God, of my tax license as well. So I was able to provide that when I was there. So I stayed at the Godfrey Hotel. I highly recommend it. This is not sponsored. The customer service is great. The rooms was beautiful. The hotel is also located as a middle point from the airport to the LA district. So it's literally at a perfect location. Um, one downfall I didn't like was the $35 a night plus tax amenities fee. Um, so use up the amenities because they're definitely going to charge you anyways. Research what company you're going to go out there for. I know we hear that a lot, but let me be a little bit more specific on that research to your customer i did research and i looked up you know vendors and stuff the hot and popular ones but i realized all the ones that i had a list of didn't have what my customers would be interested in or need so it's not like your products wasn't good their products was excellent but it just wasn't to my customer base if you plan on doing brunch while you're in the la district area i highly recommend cara cara this is not a sponsored video this is my honest opinion the food, the drinks, all taste delicious. The style of the food is in tapas form, so they are served in small portions. The location of the restaurant is beautiful. It is at a rooftop of a hotel, so if you're looking for Instagram worthy, this is definitely the spot for that. The language barrier. I was very unaware of the language barriers that would be going on. It means, like I said, that I was running into a lot were predominantly Hispanic. Um, it's funny because I'm actually learning Spanish now. So I had like un poquito. Uh, I just wish that I could be able to connect with them a little more. And the language barrier did kind of like get in the way of that a little bit. So if you have a Spanish speaking friend to go with you on the trip do. if you do speak Spanish, that is a plus for you. If you're someone like me that need to have a little Spanish in a binder for yourself, definitely want to do that. Not all of them. I'm not saying all of them don't have an English speaking people. No, like they're probably going to have someone within the store that can share that dialogue. But I do feel like if I did know some of those languages or at least have someone with me that know those languages, um, it could have flowed better with some of those new connections I was trying to build. Another thing that you should be aware about is planning your driving around. Like I said, the LA district was really big. Definitely make sure if you're going to be out there that you know what's nearby, what's in distance that you're gonna need to pay an Uber for or walk. I'm just not, a, a, I'm a Floridian, I'm a real Floridian. We drive everywhere. So some of those places you probably could have walked them, but Anything past three minutes, we driving. <laughs> when you're there, I would say look presentable. I know right now I don't got a face on or whatever, but when I was there, I wanted to look presentable because one, I noticed that because it was close to, I'm sorry, Figueroa Street or Skid Road, um, it looks like they're used to having certain type of people come in the store. I'm not here to judge or criticize. So they, a lot of them would have locks. I guess the, the stores that's more closer to those roads had locks and you know they needed to make sure they just could see who you are uh, before letting you in. I had a few stores that did that to me and my friends. Next thing I would suggest is trying your best to build genuine connection with these vendors and these people you meet. For me, I like to look at the wholesalers and the manufacturers as your company's drug dealer. You know, it sounds funny, but they're the ones that have the good stuff, the things that's gonna help and uplift your company. So you wanna make sure that you're building a genuine connection with them because 
if you have that vibe with them, they're definitely gonna keep you in the loop with what's hot, what's good. So I'm naturally just a person that's deep and like to get to know people, especially if I'm conducting business. So go with the mindset that you're gonna ask for business cards, connect with them. The next thing is the obvious one that you probably heard, ask questions. I had a pamphlet of questions. I researched what to look forward in and wholesalers. I kind of did a little research on what to look out for. Um, so I was able to ask and prepare myself to ask proper questions when I met a lot of them. And most of them are very open to answering with no issue. So that shouldn't be a problem. But last but not least, this is something that I did. It's not mandatory for anybody else. But I showed some work. First, because I was also looking at manufacturers. I wanted to show these companies what is my vision a little bit, what I'm interested in. Can you provide that? You know, how much money is that gonna be? And with doing that, because I already had like pre-designed stuff uh, pictured out for them or ideas and concepts that I saw, you know, I was able to talk to a manufacturer there and he was able to say, this is about how much money you would take. He gave me the full rundown. It was a way for them to better understand what I was looking for and what I need. Thank you for tuning into this video. I hope it was really helpful. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. And yeah, till next time.